Coming down the aisle, it's Wrestlepedia with your host, the savant of the squared circle, the Ray Man of Wrestling. It's Brody, the insane brain Herman. Welcome back to Wrestlepedia with Brody, the insane brain Herman, the savant of the squared circle, the rain man of wrestling, and I am his dad, also known as the dad. And yes, I'm still sporting this Hulk Hogan style mustache at his request. That's the kind of dad I am. I, I like to, to give a little extra. I don't have his hair uh, and I like to wear this hat. Uh, but he likes the mustache, so what can you do? Anyway, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, Brody literally is a savant, and one of his areas of expertise, and he has many, is professional wrestling. Uh, from the time he was in diapers, he absorbed this and uh, is familiar with every wrestler, every match, every division, every promoter, every booker, every manager, every yep. announcer, in the history of... Of professional wrestling. Yes. He is like a walking Google, which is why we call the show Wrestlepedia. Yes. And what we're doing for the first season of these podcasts is we're doing ranking shows because these are, are good to get debates going. And that's what we want to have. We'd like this to be interactive. We want to hear from you in the comments. We want to get emails from you uh, disagreeing with us, agreeing with us, giving us ideas. You can reach us at Brody, B R O D Y, at TheInsaneBrain.com. TheInsaneBrain.com. He responds to all of these himself. Today's episode, I'm very excited about because today we're going to count down the five most effective heels yes. in the history yes. of professional wrestling. Yes. For those of you who are amateurs to the game, of course, we talk about heels. We're talking about the villains. Yes. We talk about them being effective. What we're really talking about is their ability to really make the fans hate them. Yes. A truly yes. hated wrestler. Wrestler, yeah. So without any further ado, uh, we want to start on number five. Yeah. Who is the number five most effective heel in the history of professional wrestling? We're going to dive back. He was been a wrestler 50s, 60s, 70s, and even a tad bit in the 80s. Ed Farhat is the individual, and he played a character called the Sheik, which is an Arabic wrestler. A foreign bad guy, if you will. Uh, he worked with many top main event wrestlers. Uh, he, met, Some people even call him the greatest heel of all time. He made people legitimately hate him. He wouldn't break character, by the way. He had, you know, he was a promoter. He promoted in Detroit, and Minneapolis, and many other areas. And he was a great wrestler. I mean, at the Kobo, the Sheik was a huge deal as a bad guy. Fans legitimately hated the guy. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't even break character so much because he was a promoter and a wrestler, which is not very common. You know, it was a little more common back then. That him in his own house would not have meetings with babyface wrestlers in the same room as his family or even know that they were there. That's so how he was like one of these method actors who never breaks character. Yeah, he never broke character. So let me ask you this. He, he, he wrestled for decades. Yes. Was he ever a babyface? I'm sure he was a little bit, but mostly he's known for the Sheik heel character. The and original Sheik. The original Sheik. And, and was he the first or one of the first... Sort of foreign villains. Yes, foreign villains, yes. Because that became a running theme. Right. And still is. In wrestling, yes. And that's one of those things that they kind of do. They kind of play on the pro-American yes. uh, position. Yes. And they, they make the outsiders always into sort of the yes. deal. But the Sheik really embraced Yes, that. he did. Uh, where what was where was he actually from? Do you know? I mean, um, was he actually? Uh, from, he was from Michigan, and he was from Detroit, Michigan, where he promoted. Something. Yeah, he was from Detroit. Folks. And Farhad. I mean, he wasn't an Arabic fellow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it's just a character that he played. His name was Ed, which happens to yeah. also be my name. I love that. Isn't that just the best yeah. part about professional wrestling that you yeah. have a guy named Ed from Detroit? And he could create a character that he plays for decades yeah. and people just hate him. Yes. Let's go to number four on the list. Who number do you got? four was Scott Levy's character called Raven. Raven was a heel character in Extreme Championship Wrestling, a promotion ran by Paul Heyman. Uh, before that, he did a lot of characters like Johnny Flamingo in the WWE, but he wasn't really getting anywhere until he went to ECW and became a multi-time ECW World Heavyweight Champion playing the character Raven, which fans hated at the time. Raven was something that he is supposed to be the... Kind of a Kurt Cobain villain. If Kurt Cobain was a villain in a movie, this would be the guy to be the bad guy like Kurt Cobain. This is right on the heels. Nirvana's Kurt Cobain had just died in 1994. And then I think 95, 96, he comes in and 
you know, he's kind of supposed to be this grunge rock, this, this, this alternative rock bad guy looking person. He wore jean shorts, long hair. Like a lot of those music stars did a, a jean like jacket ripped and up. And what did he do to enrage the crowd? He Why enraged, did they hate him so much? Because it was it, he's mocking this mu their mu the music that they liked and everything that they liked. He would mock it and make it. And he would also do a lot of things in the match also that made him dastardly do anything heel wise to cheat and really went his way by being a straight heel. He was a straight heel by his look and the way he cheated against other wrestlers. The Raven at number four. Yeah. Who do we have in the number three spot for the most effective heels in the history of professional wrestling? Rowdy Roddy Piper. I love Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah. Talk, talk about Rowdy Roddy why Piper. He's, why he's the, because he is the one that, you know, when he got you mad, he could get you mad by cutting a promo. He, he seemed like he would think he'd be a likable guy, but he could just rage a crowd with his ability on the mic. And... He, hit, he hits Jimmy Superfly Snooker with the coconut, and all of a sudden he's main eventing WrestleMania against Hulk Hogan in the first WrestleMania as, as a top heel in the company. So to be a top heel and to work with Hulk Hogan... So that's Hogan all it took was just hitting Snooker with the coconut, and the next thing you know, he's... he's, he's yeah, well, that event. made him a bad guy. That made him... And then saw the reactions he was getting on the, the, these great uh, he, promos he, he also did, what, Piper's Pit? Yeah, that, that was his show. I, Piper's Pit, I remember watching that when I was a kid. And Piper's he, Pit. He wore a kilt... Yes, and a, and a that white got him a lot of heat. Yeah, he was from Canada. Uh, he really did play the bagpipes, by the way. That was a big part of his gimmick. Why he's called Roddy Piper is because Roddy Toom, Roger, Roddy Toombs, Roger Toombs, what always played bagpipes. So they're like, let's just call him Roddy Piper since he always plays these bagpipes. He's the piper. So as corny as his gimmick with this kill, it, all of a sudden he's getting these reactions because of the ability he had on the mic, and the and his in ring work wasn't bad either. Roddy Piper was a really, really good bad guy, and he just enraged the crowd by the emotion he puts into this character. Okay, uh, let's let's go to number two. And I mean, we're we're whittling down, and I've got a whole list of guys in my head that if they don't make the list, I'm going to have some real questions here. Okay. So, who do you have at number two? The Nature Boy Ric Flair, one of the most famous heels ever in wrestling. I mean, woo woo, yeah. yeah. Uh, he he preferred being a heel, and most times he was a heel in the business. He was a heel with the Four Horsemen. We talk about it on our heel turns episode. You fans got mad when he came and attacked Dusty Rhodes in the cage in Atlanta, and got mad. And we'll talk and we talk about that in our effective heel turns episode. But that was a big heel turn, and. Yeah, he was an extremely popular wrestler, but you fans hated him. Every time he went on the mic, you were jealous of Rick's wealthiness. You know, he wore alligator shoes. He wore suits. You know, he came in limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. You didn't like Rick. You were jealous of him. And especially in not the most wealthiest towns, Rick Flair was every... You aspired to be Ric Flair, but you didn't like Ric Flair because you thought he was a snobby rich guy. So he just kind of, that was his gimmick, though. He'd right. go into all these towns and kind of throw his money in right. your face. And, yes. But that was his routine. That was his routine. Okay, well, now, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he's there on the list. I am. I do not know who your number one is. I never yeah. know ahead of time. I like to keep it fresh, and I, I never know uh, who you put number one. I've got a lot of names floating around in my sure. head. Who is the number one most effective heel in the history of professional wrestling well he, he's a heel amongst the fans and the boys uh he's he works a little bit in the ring he was wwe heavyweight champion himself for a little while and it's vince mcmahon he's effective because every time he goes out and cuts a promo he gets the fans angry at him you naturally hate vince because he's wealthy and he is a bombastic figure every time he pushes a heel wrestler to beat your baby face you hate it vince is out there's presence as a promoter fans are very critical of what vince does wrestlers hate Vince when you get a universal hatred for things Vince does and it's a love-hate relationship because you love Vince and you hate Vince so not only is there multiple emotions that you go with Vince but everything every human being can cite one or two or three things they hate about Vince McMahon yeah now that makes a lot of sense but it does tell you though um you know if Vince recognizes that it's kind of a juicier role to play right to be the agitator to be right. the heel you know you would think that more of the wrestlers would really prefer that the sure. relishing the opportunity to get the boost let me throw a name out for you because i yeah. know that this was for a very short period of time yeah. 
But is does Andy Kaufman deserve no. some some attention? We here will talk about for his bit and his gimmick. When and we talk about celebrity guest appearances in wrestling, Andy Kaufman will certainly warrant on the list. But when we talk about heel wrestlers, they have to do it for I've a watched a lot of that footage, and I've never seen somebody get booed the way that they got. Normally, booed. celebrity guests do get booed. Uh, they're normally not embraced unless if you're Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali, but most. Outside boxing, wrestling, MMA personalities get booed. They're they're brought into be in that position. And Kaufman was a celebrity guest Sorry. wrestler in the Memphis territory. Uh, it was run by Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler. Um, and they wanted Jerry Lawler was one of the best wrestlers in the world at that time that didn't hold a title and that bothered him. And in Memphis, he was the king of Memphis. He has his own restaurant down there on Beale Street. He is the guy. And they bring in Andy Kaufman. We'll talk about him when we talk about celebrity guest appearances. Okay, well, we'll, we'll say one. that. Let me, yeah. let me ask you this. Now, again, I don't know this stuff like you do. Yeah. But what about a, a situation like the Wyatt family? Um. Well, I mean, the when, theme, I mean, when they were bad, and I don't know if they currently are. They are. I mean, not, unfortunately, when, let's when, dive when, into that. Okay, because when they would walk in, and they they very hauntingly do the whole, got yeah. the whole world. In their hands. In their hands, and they'd have those masks. Yeah. On. I got to tell you, I mean, it scared the crap out of me. Yeah. And I certainly hated them. And yeah. I, I didn't want to see them a lot. Sure. But I always thought, man, what a, what a gimmick. This thing is... Uh, well, I want to see I don't want to see them win. You know, Bray Wyatt is still a top heel in WWE. Eric Rowan is still alive. But unfortunately, Luke Harper, one of the three members of the Wyatt family, recently passed away. So they are no oh, longer together. I did not realize that. Yeah. Well, so fair. they're no longer together. But... Bray Wyatt's still in WWE, top bad guy. I mean, but mo I mean, he wasn't great in the ring, unfortunately. A lot of his matches aren't the greatest, and that's not why they didn't warrant on the list. But there, yeah, I, I think that's fair. I mean, he's not an impressive wrestler. Yes, he was a WWE champion. But, but to look at yeah. him, yeah, I think he was maybe more of a personality, yeah, than anything else. But anyway, you guys may disagree. If you have names that you could not believe were left off this list, we want to hear them. Put them in the comments. Send Brody an email. Yeah. Uh, Brody, B-R-O-D-Y, at theinsanebrain.com. And uh, comments, suggestions, debates, disagreements, he can handle it. Uh, just, you know, don't, don't be rude about it. I mean, we can all agree to disagree. The reality of it is, is that this is a podcast for people who love their wrestling, who like to have the debates, who like to take it seriously, who like to know the history. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, uh, to the podcast. And uh, we look forward to having you back for another episode. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.